Located on 225 acres in Garden City, Long Island, Nassau Community College, a member of the State University of New York system, has close to 20,000 students attend the school each year. The college mascot is Leo the Lion, and these are his stories of the school's absolute best and brightest who have graduated over the past 50 plus years. Let's catch up together as the Alumni Association of Nassau Community College proudly presents Lion Tales, a Nassau Community College Foundation production on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Aurora Workman. I am president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. I'm here with my friend and co-host, Dr. Linda Nadian, a proud graduate of Nassau Community College, and together we'll share stories that will inspire, uplift, and often amuse you. Each week, Aurora and I will introduce you to alumni of Nassau Community College, interested in sharing their experience here at Nassau Community College, along with the secrets to their success. Look for many new and exciting events on the Alumni Association social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and our web pages at www.nassaucommunitycollege.edu slash alumni. If you, our listening audience, has any positive news you would like to share about Nassau Community College alumni, engagements, births, graduations, weddings, and or accolades, email us at alumni at nassaucommunitycollege.edu and we will shout you out. Well, this show, we're going to take you back a little in time to 1968, where the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., leader of the Civil Rights Movement, took place in April of 68. He was killed by James Earl Ray. There was U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. 1968 was a leap year. You know, the average cost of a new house was $14,950. The average income per year was $7,850. The average monthly rent was $130. <laughs> the gas per gallon was 34 cents. The average of a new car was $2,822. A movie ticket was $1.50. And our next guest graduated from Nassau Community College in 1968. Today's guest is Ed Quinlan, an adjunct professor in the Department of Health, Physical Education, and Intramurals, who has also served on the executive board of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association for several years, and of course is a proud graduate of Nassau Community College. Welcome to Lion Tales, Ed Quinlan, class of 1968. Well, thank you so much for having me, and I'm honored to be here. Well, first we want to say, because we learned it was your birthday. <laughs> so yesterday was your Yay, birthday. Happy, so happy birthday. birthday. Now, would you like to share with us how young you turned? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a Friday the 13th Scorpio. Oh. And I, I, I turned the big 7 0 wow. yesterday. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Happy birthday. And oh, thank you so much yes. for uh, acknowledging that. So, I appreciate yeah. that. It's exciting. <laughs> so, we have a lot to talk about because our listening audience wants to know some of the vibe when you were a student here and graduated having graduated in 1968 and we'll talk some about your experiences here as an adjunct professor so in 1968 at NASA Community College tell us what the campus was like oh boy well the campus was uh, it it was small um, and uh, um, a lot of activities for incoming students I do do remember that Mm -hmm. Um, Were you always located here? Was the campus as widespread as it is now, or did it did you start someplace else in Nassau County? Oh no, I started here. You started here yeah. on this campus part, the Mitchell Field, yeah. where Mitchell it was Field. It mostly was a base at that time, right? It was a naval base, and I, as a matter of fact, we had our um, physical education classes in one of the old hangars. Oh. I believe it was Hangar H. My sister uh, was telling oh. me that. Yeah. When you look at the new gymnasium we have now, it's quite a <laughs> quite a contrast. Oh mm. my, yes. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, so we, we my sister was telling me how that they had um, class in the hangars. And oh I said, yeah, the hangars. There's no hangars when I came. <laughs> Here. <laughs> so yeah. we, and I'm always looking at the history, and I love the history of NASA Community College. So you're an adjunct professor in the Department of Health, Physical Education, and Intramurals here at NASA Community College. What are some of the specific subjects um, that you're currently teaching? Well, I teach many of the physical education activities classes, uh, such as badminton, basketball, volleyball, oh, uh, etc. And uh, I'm also uh, actively involved in teaching the health education classes, including human sexuality. Oh, I had that with um, 
Professor I, Hittleman? I had Patrick Lynch. <laughs> oh, Pat Lynch. A good had, friend of mine. Yes, I had ago. Pat Lynch when yeah. I Dr. was Dr. Hittleman, here. and then I had bowling, which we would discuss, <laughs> discuss off the air how much we love bowling. <laughs> <laughs> and so was it your love for sports that led you into this field and to make it a career? Actually, uh, I'm going to be quite candid about this. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my involvement in athletics and running started 58 years ago. Actually, 60 years ago when I was in fifth grade. Um, I was a product of basically a dysfunctional and uh, an abusive childhood. And I found that when things at home were not going as well as they should, I would go down to the boardwalk in Long Beach, my hometown, New York Boulevard, and I would break out into a complete sprint until I felt that my lungs were going to burst and that my muscles were going to explode. Uh, Basically to a point where I thought I was going to pass out. And uh, after that experience, I would walk right over to uh, St. Ignatius Church, which was right next to the boardwalk, Yeah. stop in there for a little bit, say a few prayers, go home. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that uh, after that combination of activities that I was able to cope and deal with some of the matters at home a a lot better. Mm -hmm. So that was in fifth grade. Um, all of that training for those two years before I got to seventh, when I got into seventh grade, I guess I had gotten myself in pretty good shape, and they identified me as a potential runner. And from that point on, the rest is history. Right, and you know what? In sports, in because um, I'm an af- I'm an athlete, and sports really helped me through some hard times when mm-hmm. I was coping, and I worked out fiercely. Mm-hmm. You know, I worked out fiercely, and because it was a, a great coping mechanism, <laughs> and at that time it kept my body. In shape, oh, you know, absolutely. So, yeah. you know, and I was very, you know, kept me healthy. So I do sit there, and I always want to tell, especially young people coming in, to get involved in sports, get involved with some kind of um, activity. If I, my kids were involved in track and field, and my son is bowling, so I was telling them to get involved because it really, when those times come, you do have that outlet, you know. Well, I know to me it served a uh, during those trying times a tremendous outlet. Uh, um, I tell people that it's basically my salvation. Um, there's eating, sleeping, mm-hmm. family, and there's running. Yeah. As far as my existence is and concerned. And also it's sort of, you know, a therapeutic model that you could say to someone, again, like channeling your ener- energies towards something that you love, and then that becomes that, that foundational piece for you to, to move on with the other parts of life that maybe would not be as exciting. Absolutely. Right. And a nice thing about running, too, is the type of activity that uh, even when you're done with your competitive years, you, you can, can continue. Still. And I've been fortunate that my body, you know, my, my knees and my hips and everything have held up. And I'm still able to do it and compete, and for that I'm very thankful. That's wonderful. You're listening to Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. I am Aurora Workman, along with Dr. Linda Nadian, and our guest today is Ed Quinlan, Nassau Community College adjunct professor in the Department of Health, Physical Education, and Intramurals, and former executive board member of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. Now, Ed, we were talking about running, and I I mean, and I'm telling you, I wish my knees didn't give out, but they were, you know, because I would, I love doing. I go still to the gym and exercise, but I would really like to get out there on the, uh, you know, on the course and at the track and run with my kids and just just air out. So, but we're in 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 that time, we know because you had just gotten um, an honor. Okay, as an athlete in the Hall of Fame of of Adelphi. And I'm telling you, if our listeners can see this young Ed Quinlan sitting in front of us, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you're amazing. But tell us about your um, Hall of Fame award. Uh, It was quite a humbling experience, and uh, I was extremely honored. Uh, to me, for your for your college or university to recognize you in that manner for your participation in an activity that you personally got so much enjoyment out of um, was was quite an experience, to say the least. Uh, it, it was 50 years later to the date, uh, to, uh, 2018, and I competed there in uh, in well, 68 I started, mm-hmm. so it was quite a long time, but um, 
I, I, I was very honored. Yes. Very yeah. honored. It's always good to be yeah. recognized. And so you were the New Hyde Park Garden City Park School District Board of Ed trustee and president for nine years mm-hmm. as well. And then as the chairperson of health, physical ed, physical education, and athletics at Cary High School. Yes. And so from your perspective, how important is this area of athletics and sports as part of the curriculum, you know, in general? Mm. I found it to be very important um, in terms of athletics. As, as we all know, stress discipline mm-hmm. and, and time management skills, which I feel carry over quite heavily into the academic areas. Right. Um, you know, the old concept of a strong body and a sound mind. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, you know, there are some school districts that were in danger of having their budgets reduced and forcing them to cut back. And sports seems like the easy solution to reduce or remove. But what kind of impact could that have, you know, on the teenagers that that we're servicing right now that really are athletic and need the outlet and and sort of like pumping up that school um, spirit? I think it would be quite unfortunate. Um, you know, in, in order to participate in high school and collegiate athletics, students must pass their subjects. Mm-hmm. For many students, athletics serve as a, a very important motivator in a classroom. Removing athletics could eliminate this this motivator. Also, athletics provide an important after-school involvement. Right. Uh, better that that our students are are participating in a healthy, worthwhile activity mm-hmm. during their free time than getting involved in some of the negative aspects mm-hmm. in our society. Yeah, we find that uh, a lot of the school boards are trying to update their athletic fields and make mm-hmm. sure that there's a place for just the whole community to go, even for walking on the track or um, just throwing around the baseball so that there is an area for community members to go in addition to all the teams uh, mm-hmm. that they have in, in these high schools. Mm-hmm. And, you know, coming into the college setting, w- would you encourage, like, a student athlete to attend Nassau and be part of some of our teams that we have here, football and everything that's going on? <laughs> I always do. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I was back in the high school and we talked about, uh, we did a little section on um, uh, career opportunities and, and college opportunities. And I would, they asked me, well, where did you go? How did you get started? And I would always mention uh, starting at Nassau Community and the benefits of that. And when you came into Nassau, were you running here? Yes, I was. Yeah. I was recruited out of high school by uh, Dr. Patrick Carolyn, uh, right out of Long Beach High School, and um, I started right in the uh, month of August before my freshman year. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you did a lot of practice there. You know, one of the things I found too, as a um, a student athlete, when I came. And I tell my, you know, I tell my kids it's different, but it's not too different today. As a student athlete, I had to live, breathe, and eat track. I my schedule, and one thing I found when I came here, they helped me so that my schedule would be, you know, for all the track meets, all the practices that mm-hmm. we had. Yeah. Okay, in between, so my life really kind of revolved around track and field when I first got here because. That was everything, to, you know. That was I was living and breathing that. Uh-huh. I was, you know, and I tell as a student athlete, <clears throat> you know, I didn't get involved with so many clubs and stuff because when I was off, I was on the track mm-hmm. or I was in the gym or in the weight room stretching or doing something, and so it, and it, it really kept me focused. But I didn't know that I missed certain things because uh-huh. I was a student athlete, and you know, I think it's great though because it keeps you on point as a student it, it, it's interesting you mentioned that aurora because you know i was discussing this at the uh, the hall of fame uh awards dinner at uh, adelphi and i was asked that question and um i had to explain that you know when you're a uh, when you're a recruited athlete and at adelphi for example i was recruited for three seasons mm. for cross country winter track and spring track so the summer months you have to train and get ready for um, the cross country season mm-hmm. and then at the end of the cross country season you know if you qualified for the playoffs which we did you actually overlap the winter season mm. so now the winter season would start you'd go through that and then when the winter season was over you again you had your championships overlap the spring spring season would start mm. spring would take you right to the end of the school year 
and then you'd find yourself having to start training again for the summer okay. cross country. On to the championship. So it wasn't all year you round listening. Commitment. You are listening to Lion Tales. Today's guest, former alumnus of Nassau Community College and currently working as adjunct professor in the Department of Health, Physical Education and Intramurals here at Nassau Community College, Ed Quinlan. My name is Linda Nadian, along with Aurora Workman on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Okay, so maybe you didn't finish or broke your New Year's resolution to get to the gym or start that project you had kept on the back burner since, well, okay, the dawn of time. I get it. That's okay. But you know, there's one thing you can do to get back that inspiration, that can-do spirit. Perhaps you or someone you know has a vehicle that they don't drive anymore. Why not consider donating it to the National Federation of the Blind? All you have to do is call 866-282-7327. That's 866-282-7327. You can also log online to nfb.org and click donate. And maybe you know someone that's blind. You can reach out to nfb at nfb.org. Org. That's nfb at nfb.org. So what do you have to lose? You have everything to gain by helping someone in need, like your motivation. Oh, and a tax deduction. So why not get started today? And remember, charity is only a phone call away. Welcome back to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation, on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Dr. Linda Nadian, along with Aurora Workman, and our guest today is Ed Quinlan, former graduate of Nassau Community College, former executive board member of Nassau Community College, alumni association, and current adjunct professor at Nassau Community College. So we were speaking about not only your academic side, but in the physical education side, you were you were a, a serious athlete, and you spoke about how that really laid a foundation for you as a person. And can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, because you were quite the athlete. Actually, um, during during my high school years, uh, I, I, I indicated how I got started running, mm-hmm. but. Um, it, it was rough. Uh, I felt that because of the home situation, I really didn't get an opportunity to um, to pursue my academics and my athletic endeavors in a way that I should. There were a lot of negatives going on, and uh, a lot of them were withdrawing or, or pulling me away from right. really developing as an athlete. So as much as I was a, a, a good high school runner, I never considered myself an outstanding one, but I felt that there was potential once I was able to break free of the barriers that I was um, surrounded with. So at the age of 18, I, uh, which was my second year at NASA, I actually moved out of my house. I got my own apartment, okay. and um, I felt that um, the, the, the lack of stress that I was experiencing and anxiety at home, now I was able to really relax and to devote myself to my athletics and my academics, and I really started to come into my own. The confidence was building. My self-image was improving. And by the time that I got to Adelphi, that that's that's when I, I I really started to really started to excel. Yeah, it's interesting because many of the guests we've had on the show, you know, speak about adversity in their early years and up into their their teen years, and somehow coming to Nassau allowed them another opportunity to to feel a, a spirit of of pursuit to be successful in their chosen field and do you feel like maybe some of the classes you took were so um i guess interesting and eclectic that it allowed you to kind of grow as a student here oh absolutely i think it was a combination of the classes and the uh the instructors mm-hmm. and the uh the personal interest that my coaches took in me um, there was a real bond there. They they sensed that there was something going on, and um, I was very candid with them. And I must tell you, it was more like a uh, well, my coaches here was more like a uh, a father relationship, mm-hmm. a role image. They were replacing something that uh, I had missed for so many many years. 
both Dr. Carolyn, um, I remember Bill Stevenson, God rest both their souls, um, yeah. who had passed on. Um, they, they were incredible role models for me, uh, as were some of my instructors. Arnie Hillman, I remember, oh, played yeah. a key role in my life. He was my human sexuality teacher, yeah. And I knew him back in my high school days at Long Beach, which is where he started. Yeah. And, um, yeah. He taught the human sexuality class, which is so yeah. interesting, because now you are teaching that course where... He was a big influence on me mm -hmm. from a teaching perspective. Mm -hmm. He was very much into mentoring and making sure that everybody's personality was uh, part of the classroom. Mm -hmm. that, that I remember that about him. They, they, they got me to actually um, overcome the obstacles and to really start to believe in myself because they believed yeah. in me. Right. And that's a, and, uh, a so seriously important. theme throughout the guests that we've had here. Myself, all of us as yeah. alumni. You know, we always feel a sense of they made you feel important. It, 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 even if it's a class at 20, they made you feel like you were the one that they were taking care of. And they and they took care of you. They, it wasn't, just, oh, a, no. it wasn't no. just a ruse. Mm -hmm. They took care. I mean, I became very close with my professors here. And throughout my development, after I left here, you know, we still talk on the phone. And, oh, sure. You know, had dinner together. They've been at my weddings, you know, <laughs> the babies, the, through everything. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm so grateful for the professors and the friends that they became my mentors uh, my, and my life coaches, basically. And so I'm so grateful for having that here at NASA Community College. It was definitely like a family, a family atmosphere, a family involvement. And I know when I got that call from uh, Pat Carroll in my senior year of high school recruiting me to come here, I was like uh, ecstatic. I yeah, said, why, yeah. why would he want me? And, uh, <laughs> uh, he, and now they got you back. They got me back yes, again. They they back. Back. Yeah. All back. Can't get rid of me. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're going to um, talk about that feeling that, you know, here it is, because I know I had it having been a student here and then coming back as an employee. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and my whole thing was, yes, I want to give back to NASA Community College because they really changed the trajectory of my life. You know, um, things weren't as well as they should have been mm -hmm. until I came. And my mom just said, look, OK, I bet you. Sh and she bet me. She says, yeah, I'll give you a hundred dollars. You just spend one semester at NASA and then whatever you want to do after after that you go ahead and do mm -hmm. okay and i never never left <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to lion tales on the voice of nassau community college 90.3 whpc my name is aurora workman along with dr linda nadian and our guest today is ed quinlan class of 1968 and he's more than just working here at uh, as an adjunct at a professor at nassau community college and so we want to learn some more about you ed you you know, there's another honor that we'd like to talk about. You were named the New Hyde Park Man of the Year for your work with children in the community. What did that work entail? Mm -hmm. And that that is greatness. And, and mm -hmm. I just like to tell, <laughs> and, and you know, and I always yeah. brag about our alumni because we have the greatest. They went out and took this mantra of going out and making your communities better. And they have. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, what, man of the year, congrats. Thank I you. I had a thank you very much. Thing. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That's so nice of you, Aurora. I appreciate that. Yeah, basically, when I started teaching, uh, my first teaching job back in 1971, uh, when I came out of Adelphi, was in the uh, New High Park, Garden City Park Elementary School District. Okay. And... Um, when I when I started working with the kids, I felt that I I wanted to do something with them outside of the classroom. I wanted to expose them to an activity such as running, mm -hmm. which which paid all those dividends and those benefits for me. Hoping that they'd be able to use it in very similar ways as they progress through their years. So I started an age group um, distance track and field program called the New High Park Roadrunners. Started very small. It was just the community kids. And then after a few years, it built to over um, 200 runners wow. from not just New High Park, but from many different locations in the neighboring areas. And uh, we, we trained. I had coaches. We traveled to various types of competitions. And then before I knew it, we were traveling to uh, competitions all over the country, um, both in cross country and in, in track and field events. Um, in 1983, the same year that I received the uh, Man of the Year honor, I was also recommended as the National Coach of the Year by the uh, Roadrunner Club of America, 
the uh, Junior Olympics, mm-hmm. the National Junior Olympics, and the National AAU for basically the um, the number of runners that we had all those years yeah. and the the accomplishments that we achieve with them. And, uh, you know, I've been I've, I've been able to follow many of these youngsters into their adulthood, and I'm happy to say that uh, so many of them have, have done so well. Many of them attended my... Um, my uh, Hall of Fame awards uh, recognition yeah, uh, uh, last month, and uh, it was wonderful to see them. And uh, one of the things that really stood out was I, I couldn't help but notice the, the, the many of them had maintained their conditioning. They right. said that yeah. all of those <laughs> things that they learned at those younger years, when they got older, they wanted to continue. They wanted to stay in shape, mm-hmm. I guess, similar to the way I did. And now that they have their own children, etc., they're trying to pass the same thing on to them. Mm-hmm. And they said that they they did find that uh, the running can serve as as an incredible outlet just to uh, for stress reduction and, and that type of thing. So that's how the whole thing got started. Yeah, and it does. <clears throat> it does help you maintain. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, I, and I should be in better shape after three kids. People, give me a breath. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, but even now when I go out and I and I just want to feel better and I'm not really running as much because my knees were injured and I had back surgery, but I do like to get out and walk around the track and you. see how much I can move. And I walk around the campus and was like, "Why are you walking?" You know, I was like, "Look, I'm gonna walk over there." <laughs> I mean, I, I refuse to believe that my knees are giving out on me. Yeah. That's the oh, whole boy. thing. I refuse to believe. The one told me a little pencil map of this may happen. You wake up in yeah. the morning, it's like, "Wait a minute, why aren't you following me out the bed?" I mean, <laughs> yeah. I know there's a, a, a woman that I know that was actually a runner, and her dad felt like he could barely walk to the stop sign when he was bringing his grandson to the bus. But he oh said every day he walked a little to the bus stop, then he ran a little, then he walked, then he ran, then he walked. And the next thing he knew, he was going like two miles a day. Mm-hmm. And he just built it up. And, you know, for, for someone who was 65 years old, all of a sudden he's trying to do the the mini marathons and then the big marathons and he 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 wrote a book about that about how he really could barely get to the stop sign wow so i always thought that that was so interesting because i know that you know running is an outlet walking is an outlet and people are using that so it's it's a way for people to sort of say hey i really could probably do it if i tried to absolutely if there's a if you look back and you decided that you could talk to the young ed quinlan what is that one thing that you would tell him that you've learned it's just so he can and that and you know the young Ed Clinton the one you huh. were troubled you were finding an outlet you found a space and now you're next to young Ed Quinlan what would you say then mm-hmm. well that's that's a great question Aurora <sighs> what I think I would have to say to him is uh, just um, don't give up mm-hmm. don't 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 let things get to you um, don't don't let the people that are around you that are supposed to be nurturing you destroy you and uh, that there are others out there who um, will will look out for you they'll 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 take care of you there'll always be somebody there to get you through those hard times and um, you you know you you've you've got to be mentally you've got to be physically strong you've got to be able to persevere you, you've got to convince yourself that you are worth something, uh, regardless of what others have tried to drum into you, and that um, you, you can ultimately succeed and accomplish your goals in this life. Well, thank you so much. We'd like to thank our guest, Ed Quinlan, adjunct professor in the Department of Health, Physical Education, and Tomorrow's at Nassau Community College, and a proud Nassau Community College alumni. That was great. Thank you, Ed. Yeah. Thank you so much. We want to thank you for being with us. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian, along with my fabulous friend, Aurora Workman, president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. The creative director of Lion Tales is Rudy J. Breedy. This show is a production of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. Visit NassauCommunityCollege.edu slash WHPC for more information. Available as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. Lion Tales is powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. On the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. We'll talk to you next week.